uh, okay, so that I can post this later. We all good? All right. Um, I'm going to assume that we're all good because no one's saying no. Oh. So let's do this. So electric current. Electric current is all about moving charge. Um, most of the time, what this means is that electrons are moving. Um, so like, let's say you have a wire is made up of atoms, obviously. Um, probably copper for most wires. And I'm not gonna draw a whole structure of a copper atom here. I'm just gonna draw like a nucleus. And uh, what happens when you apply a voltage to this, which is a sort of a difference in energy between the two sides of the wire, is that electrons want to flow from one atom to the other. Um, these are like the outermost electrons. Do you remember in chemistry, anyone? Ah, here's the thing for chat. Um, does anyone remember what the outermost electrons are called in chemistry? Let me give you a minute. Valence, woo! Oh, you guys are awesome. You guys are so good. All right. Yeah, mo mostly the electrons that are moving are valence electrons. Uh, um, I'm sure you can come up with a scenario where that's not necessarily the case, but I think for the most part, most normal circumstances, it's going to be the outermost electrons that are less bound to an atom, that are going to be flowing. Um, unfortunately for us, when the idea of electric current and electricity really was being developed, um, they didn't know about electrons. And here's another question for Chet. Uh, when was electricity really, and, and really who is associated with like early electricity experiments? There's a hint, it's an American. Franlin Thomas Edison. Uh, it, it <laughs> it's earlier than Edison and Tesla. It's it's Benjamin Franklin, which I'm assuming Franklin is is what it means. Yeah, so Benjamin Franklin is is and a couple of other scientists of the era are responsible really for setting some of the conventions that we actually still use today. Um, and unfortunately, at the time, he didn't know electrons existed, uh, so he kind of did it. Unfortunately for us, backwards. So when we talk about electric current, the variable we use for that is going to be an I, by the way. Um, so when we talk about electric current, we're actually, and the direction of electric current actually is the most important thing we're talking about here. If electrons are flowing this way, unfortunately for us, the current flows in the opposite direction. Um, the opposite direction the electrons are actually going which is uh, not great. Um, you kind of define this as electrons go from negative potential to positive potential, um, or potential energy, I, I guess you could say, electric potential. Yeah, electrons are negative, because they're, so they're gonna go away from the negatives and they're gonna go towards the positives. Um, so, they're going to go this way, and unfortunately current goes from plus to minus instead of minus to plus. What's actually happening is the electrons are the things that are actually moving. But because Franklin didn't know that electrons, really subatomic particles in general, didn't really know that they existed, um, he just by default decided to make it, the current flow from plus to minus. And I don't know if it's entirely his responsibility that we have to do this dumb convention. It might... There might have been other scientists who, who decided that that uh, plus to minus was the best idea. But I do know he's associated with early like, electrical experiments. So, okay, the way that I like to conceive of electrical current, if I'm thinking about it like, um, like a thing that's actually moving, since the electrons are moving, in this case, from minus to plus, what's moving from plus to minus if you imagine like 
your valence shell around the each atom here, and just if you imagine just one electron moving, um, what it does is it leaves behind a hole at each position it leaves, right? So as it hops from one to one atom to the next, it leaves behind a a, a hole. And if you consider these holes as a particle, they're not, but if you consider them as a particle, it's as if a positive, positively charged particle with the same charge as an, ele as an electron is moving from the plus to the minus potential uh, in the same kind of manner that an electron is moving from the minus to the plus. Does that make any sense? And I know that the concept of holes is a really bizarre one. When I was first introduced to it, I was like, come on, man, that's ridiculous stuff. It is pretty ridiculous. French says yes. Good to hear. I'll take branches yes and no other questions. Ish. <laughs> Ish is all I can really hope for. Yes. So, uh, good question in the chat. Do those holes later get filled? Yes, they absolutely do get filled by other electrons moving behind them. And, and in reality, what's there's like, you know, in a wire, it's not just like one row of atoms here, right? It's like millions and millions of atoms. Even in like the thinnest wire, it's millions of atoms stacked up. So there's a lot of electrons moving. And in actual fact, they're moving very slowly. Um, that's something called drift velocity. Uh, the, the actual velocity of electrons moving in a wire when a current is applied. It, it's pretty slow. It, you know, it can be up to like walking pace, but not much faster than that in most cases. I mean, you can certainly imagine a very high voltage case where that's not true, but most of the time you're talking about like walking pace or less. Very slow indeed. Um, but because there are so many electrons in even the smallest, thinnest wire, uh, it, you don't have to have them going very fast to get a lot of current, which actually, great questions, actually brings me to the formal definition of what current is. So remember, current is this I here. Um, we don't use C because C was also already used for coulombs, the unit, and, and plenty of other things. Um, so we're using I for current. I don't actually know why we use I for current. There might be a good like etymological reason, but I have not yet found it. Um, so the, the equation, though, is pretty simple. It's just the amount of charge, Q, that flows through a particular point. So say I have, I'm measuring the current at this point on my circuit. It's the amount of charge that flows through or past this point in a certain amount of time. So the units of it are going to be coulombs per second, which is also known as an ampere. Or an amp. I think I got the accent in the right direction, but it could be the other direction. I'm not sure. Questions so far? Oh, and and sometimes I should add. I should add. Uh, this is a delta Q sometimes over delta T, just just to show that it it's not the absolute amount of charge in in the wire. It's the amount of charge that flows through a point in a certain amount of time. Um, oh, I'll say too. Most of the time, if you're working with um, circuits that are safe for human contact, we're talking about microamperes or, or at the very most milliamperes. Um, the, uh, the current, the, num the amount of amperes that are dangerous is what's dangerous in electricity. Um, not to say that high voltage can't be dangerous, but high current is the most dangerous thing. So if you have like a one amp current, even like a one or a two amp current, that can be deadly in, cer in the right circumstances. Hopefully, you don't come into contact with that. Cross my fingers. Questions at the moment? I'll wait a minute for questions if you have to formulate them. Okay. 
Oh, and I'm also going to try to save this picture and uh, upload it for you as well. Intensité de courant. Oh, nice. I did not know that. That's good to know. Good to know. Oh, for the video I should mention, Victoria was saying that according to Wikipedia, the I for current comes from the French term intensité du courant, which is really nice. Good, good historical detail. All right, if there's no other questions or comments, I'm going to move on to um, resistance and I guess voltage as well, since they're all interrelated. And uh, that'll be it for this particular lecture, and then we'll do maybe a sample problem or six. Okay, I'm going to draw a line underneath here so that we just know it's separate. Okay. Uh, which, I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll do resistance first. Resistance um, in, in our, our variable notation, thankfully, it's just going to be a big R. Um, and we're actually going to get much more into resistance, I think, next week. Um, maybe the week after, depending on, on how things go. Uh, there's actually something called resistivity that will allow you to calculate the resistance of any given circuit element. Um, but we don't need to do that right now. We're just going to know that res uh, what resistance is. So resistance is the, well, uh, resistance is a good name for it. It's the resistance to the flow of current. So if you have electrons flowing through a circuit, um, a low resistance means that they can flow more freely and, and uh, at larger currents, and a high resistance means that they can their their flow is restricted. I like to think of, about this as a. Um, I guess there's two good analogies for this. Um, uh, one analogy for a circuit is some uh, substituting instead of electrical energy, substituting gravitational energy. So, kind of like a roller coaster. So. Um, a circuit might look like, or eh, probably not like that. I can undo. Maybe like that. And um, so, so on this part, the uh, and we'll get to what voltage is in a minute. But in this part, the the voltage is increasing. Um, maybe this is like a a battery, and I, I should draw a graph here. This is. This is like energy, this axis. Um, and then, so like a, a battery basically is increasing the voltage, or in, in the analogy for gravity, uh, it's lifting the electrons up this slope here. So now it's at a high voltage. The voltage between these two points is high. And it's going to fall down this slope. Where the slope is steeper, like here, that's a lower resistance. They're they're able to go faster or, or more more quickly. Where the slope is is less steep here, and I'm making a mess of this drawing. That's a, a, a higher resistance. It's it's harder for them to proceed forward. Um, that I think this analogy is much more useful when we talk about voltage. For resistance, actually, I think the best way to think about it is like a pipe um, where water is flowing through. Has I don't know, did, those of you in my ninth grade class, we didn't talk about this, but did, did your ninth grade class that wasn't like the uh, advanced math one, any of you who were in that, um, which is, most of you were in my class anyway, did anyone talk about like uh, water dynamics and pressure, like flow through a tube? Probably not, that's pretty advanced stuff. We haven't even gotten to it in this class. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume no. Yeah. Um, oh, Isabel, it's good to know you're here. I'm going to put you on the I heard from you list. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, yeet. Uh, okay. So I like to think about um, uh, this particular thing as um, so resistance is more like like restricting the flow 
of of water through a pipe. So when the pipe is is big, right? You get um, you get slower flow, uh, but but sort of easier. And then when it's small, you get faster flow, but it, it means the number of electrons or number amount of water that goes through is, is less. Um, so resistance is like making the pipe constricted. And there's a formula that uh, relates resistance, current, and voltage. It's called Ohm's law. We're going to get there in a minute. Um, but the, the, the name Ohm, I forget his first name, um, is pretty important here because the unit for resistance is ohms. Uh, which for us is represented by a Greek omega. And most of the time you'll, you'll find resistors marked, um, gosh, this is where I wish, yes, a label for the x-axis in the drawing. Is there a label? No. I guess it's just like distance along the circuit. Georg Ohm. Doesn't have a full first name. Georg Simon Ohm. Okay, so yeah, so resistance is of, of any circuit element is measured in ohms, and, and everything has a resistance, um, except for maybe like a superconductor might have a resistance of zero. Um, so, but in, in a normal circuit, you're going to have elements that are purely there to to uh, provide a certain amount of resistance in a circuit. I mean, most wires have a very, very small resistance. And, um, ooh, this is the point where I should pull up like a table of resistance. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to smallinize this so that we can actually still see the chat. Um, Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. So here's a bunch of different um, metals, I guess, in this particular one. Yeah, okay, I don't care about that. Resistivity um, is different, very closely related to resistance. We're going to get to what it is, I think, next week. Um, but, it, but for now, it's, it's directly, like, pro directly proportional to what resistance is. The difference is uh, the size of the actual circuit element that's doing the resisting. Um, but but you can, like, this is uh, the resistance of various things. So um, electrical resistivity here. So silver um, at 293 Kelvin, so room temperature. This is micro-ohms times centimeters, which is having to do with the actual physical size of the resistor. So like the bigger the resistor in certain dimensions, the more resistance it'll have. Um, silver and copper and gold here have really small res We're talking about micro ohms. Uh, bismuth down here has a lot more. Um, oh, I should get a different table that has actual resistors and not conductors on it. Um, and here we go. You guys see this one? Yeah, okay, this is not terrible. So, like, iron powder is, is pretty non-resistive. The opposite of resistive is conductive. Uh, so it's 0 0.001 ohms, ohm meters, uh, for resistivity. Wet is different for some of these. But something like, uh, what's a big one? Soil at three meters depth, at site one. Granite powder, there you go, like rock. Rock powder is very resistive, 488 ohm meters. So you can see different materials have different uh, resistivities here. Resistivity, uh, just to get into it a little bit, is just a property of the material. Kind of like the spring constant is a property of that individual spring. Any individual uh, material, granite powder, cast iron powder, whatever, is going to have 
some resistivity. Uh, water conducts or, or makes the uh, flow of electricity a lot easier. You'll see most of these, when it's wet, the res resist resistivity is a lot less. So for granite powder, when it's wet, it's like, I don't know what that is, um, 40 times less, something like that. 20 times less than it is when it's dry. For some of these, for metals, it's going to be about the same. But yeah, if you compare them, water just helps conduction of electricity, which is why uh, you don't want to be standing in a puddle of water when you're working on something electrical, or you don't want to like drop a toaster in the bathtub or something like that. All bad things. Um, oh, here's, here's just a really small one, but this is actually a really good table because it shows resistors and conductors. So copper, which we use for wires, has a really tiny resistivity. We're talking about like micro ohm meters there. Aluminum is actually also used for wire a lot these days because um, <laughs> people like to steal copper wire because copper is expensive or more expensive. So you can see aluminum resists a, a little bit more, a little less than twice as much as copper, uh, but it's still very it's on the same order of magnitude, so it's still useful for a circuit. Whereas something like quartz has a very high resistivity. We're talking about like 10 to the 24 times more resistive than copper or aluminum, right? Uh, so it would not be usable as a circuit. Um, but if you want to make a really big resistor out of quartz, that might be the way to go. Um, so you need both kinds of elements in a circuit. You need, you need both things. Okay, do we need what, that equ which equation? JK, JK, okay. Um, oh, oh, no, you don't need it yet. I'm gonna teach you all the equations you need to know. Um, so that's resistance. How about voltage? And I'll do a different color for voltage. Uh, dark green voltage. Nice for us that um, voltage is is uh, represented just with a V. Um, to relate it back to our previous week before break, um, voltage is actually pretty closely related to the electric potential. Uh, so there's this quantity. We have not yet gone over it, um, and, and we're not going to do it for another week or two. It's called electric potential energy. Um, it, it's the same thing as like gravitational potential energy. It's potential energy of some sort. It's going to look a lot like gravitational potential energy, in fact. Um, so the voltage is essentially the gravita the electric potential energy. Essentially, it's close, closely related to that. Um, so in this analogy up here that I had with the uh, sort of roller coaster thing, the voltage was like the difference in energy between these two points. So going from here to here is a difference in energy for gravity on the, in this analogy. You lift it up, right? The, remember the, uh, the PE was MGH. Uh, so the voltage is, is very much like that. We're going to get an equation for voltage in a bit, but thankfully we don't need it right now. I want to try to keep it simple today. Um, but we'll get it probably next week. Uh, when we're dealing more with real circuits. Um, but yeah, the voltage is, is a potential energy difference between two points in a circuit. And actually, that's probably the most important part of this, is that uh, resistance is just something that happens for a particular circuit element. Electric current is something that happens at a particular place in the circuit. But voltage has to be a difference between two points. You can't have a voltage at just one point. It has to have some sort of difference. Um, so, so it's a relative measure. So you, you, we talk about the electric current through a point or the resistance of a resistor, but we talk about the voltage across uh, a certain gap or a certain element or whatever. We talk about the voltage across things. Um, uh, voltage is measured in um, volts. Another V, very hopefully not confusing. 
Um, probably not confusing to have all those Vs. None of them are velocity, turns out this time. Um, hmm. What else to say about voltage? Oh, the relationship between these three. Uh, voltage, resistance, and current. Um, the relationship between these three is a really, really nice simple equation called Ohm's Law. Same Ohm as this guy over here. Um, and it's a dead simple equation. V voltage equals I current times resistance R. There it is, V equals I R, or Vir. That's probably the most important equation we're going to have for this entire unit, or at least this part of the unit on circuits, definitely. Um, there's another one that has to do with uh, power output of a particular circuit element. Um, I want to save that for next week because I want to actually work with real, well, real uh, circuit examples at least next week. Um, but yeah, there you go. V equals IR is, uh, is Ohm's law. And it's pretty pretty good one. So these are the two equations we need to know from today. I'm going to circle them in red so that we can remember them. The definition of current up here is delta Q over delta T, the amount of charge flowing through a point in a certain amount of time, measured in amperes, A, and Ohm's law, which is the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Good. I feel like that's a lot of material for an online lecture. Um, how are we feeling? You don't yet need to know how to find resistance. Good question. We will work with that next week. Um, and that, that'll have to do with resistivity, the one that I was showing you on those tables. Uh, I will teach you how to do that next week, though, because I want to work on circuits and circuit elements next week. But for today, I just wanted to keep it a bit more simple with just these two equations. Kind of confused about what voltage is. Um, you can think of like in this in this analogy here with uh, like the roller coaster, voltage is 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 acting like the gravitational potential energy of these electrons as they move up, right? As they go from down here, they have very little potential energy, and up here they have a lot. The voltage is the difference in potential energy between these two points. So this is a high positive voltage. And if I go down from here down to like down to here, all the way down, that's a the same amount, because it's going down to the same level, of negative voltage making the electrons flow. Or really, it's making the holes flow. Um, if you want to think about it in this analogy, the uh, pipe analogy, voltage is, is just the pressure pushing things through. So if resistance is like the restriction of the pipe, like the, uh, yeah, the restriction, the current is like the speed of the electrons, the voltage is the pressure pushing them through. So here's, I'm going to stop the recording right now really quick.